Welcome back. Well, we are in the month of August, which means we are heading into the most active part of the hurricane season. Usually this time of year, our weather computer models will start spitting out random storms and hurricanes in the long range, which can cause some panic if you see that shared on social media. So to talk about the accuracy of those long range and actually short range tropical forecasts, we have Houston Chronicle meteorologist Justin Ballard. So thank you so much for joining us, Justin. Thank you for having me as we are about two weeks out from or about a week out, I should say, from mm -hmm. the climatological start of the peak of the Atlantic mm -hmm. hurricane season. I know we are getting so close to it and I feel like it's been pretty laid back so far for it us, has. but things are most likely going to heat up yeah. and we are starting to see indications in some of our long range forecasts that things could start to get going and we some are. people might be seeing that on social media. I wouldn't be surprised if people started sharing screen grabs mm -hmm. of, you know, this model, this model, you know, it's 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 fun and games until it's not. So let's talk about kind of how that timeline evolves when we're talking about hurricane season forecasting, because it is a longer timeline than, you know, just kind of forecasting your daily thunderstorm chance. First, it begins seven to 10 plus days out. I would say, you know, any sort of landfalling, anything that could form is at least a week and a half to two weeks out. Mm -hmm. So that's good. So you're recognizing the patterns here. And this is a process that every meteorologist, every hurricane forecaster kind of goes through. And the pattern shows that we're certainly starting to get busier and that's expected. Five to seven days out, you get a better idea. Still though too soon to really tell where exactly a system's going to go, how organized it will get. You see this kind of example here in the graphical weather outlooks from the, from the National Hurricane Center. Those blobs across the Atlantic, that is real time sort of information five to seven days out, three to five days out, that's when you start narrowing down impacts. That's also when you can expect to see your first sort of glance at a cone. Now, of course, that cone shifts during that three to five days, certainly, but as you start getting into the one to three day time period, that's when things start to hone in a little bit more. So alerts by this point are usually issued, typically 24 to 48, up to about 72 hours out. Starts, of course, with watches, then gets upgraded to warnings if necessary. And then less than 24 hours out, it's really about tracking and sheltering in place. So making sure wherever you're at, you know, 24 hours to landfall is well you'll, where you'll likely need to stay during landfall and the, of course landfall is the worst impacts felt you know as the system's moving on shore. So obviously our accuracy goes up you know the closer Correct. we are to it going out but when do you think that people should really start listening up to huh this might be something I have to deal with? I think it starts before a system enters the Gulf but I really think you know once the system does get into the Gulf you've got about what maybe three days max depending on where exactly in the Gulf it goes. I think once you see something getting into the Caribbean especially the Western Caribbean that's when we here in Houston need to be going, OK, what do I need to do to, you know, take care of preparations? Anything that may take more than two days in advance, mm -hmm. you should start those about five days out. So once the system gets into the Western Caribbean, that's when you really need to be paying it close attention. And I feel like too, especially for all of our folks who live along the coast, it is even more imperative because you might actually have to evacuate or go somewhere else. So you need to have kind of a go bag ready that you can prepare you in just a few days. And it really, I mean, we've got the luxury of time here in this part of, of you know, the Gulf Coast. So that's some good news. I do actually want to show you some of the, the modeling mm -hmm. that we're, we're kind of looking at over the next week and a half to two weeks, because I think that will help hopefully give a sense of like just how uncertain some of the forecasts are. So we'll start first with the European model. Now, of course, this is kind of the near term. So this is now through Sunday, Monday. We're kind of keeping an eye on that system out in the deep tropical Atlantic, really not looking like it's going to be an impact to land. Let's talk about, though, the southern system that starts to form early next week in, or excuse me, mid to late next week, mid to late next next week, I guess, two yes. weeks out. So we're talking August 16th, heading into the middle of August. Again, this is when we're kind of looking at the, the busiest time of the year or mm -hmm. start of that. The GFS shows a very similar sort of scenario. You've got that system that we're currently watching that has a 60% chance of development over the next seven days. That moves off towards Bermuda, staying away from the United States, thankfully. But then watch that southern sort of spin, that low level spin there developing as we get into that late next next week in mm -hmm. two weeks from now, uh, that's when we'll be keeping a very close eye. Where that system goes will ultimately determine, you know, how, you know, ready we need to be here mm -hmm. in, along the Gulf Coast. Admittedly, you should already be ready for a hurricane if it does come, but 
final hurricane preparations. I and guess. I feel like with people, what we're seeing there, you know, we are seeing two models showing something popping up yes. in that region. There's also been different prediction centers saying that region is does have a medium chance Correct. of something developing as well. So that's, that's why that we pattern recognition. Pattern recognition, recognition, mm -hmm. and you're exactly right. So I mean, some people might post something like this and keep, yeah. you know, pulling it on through, and you can't really trust it from there because there's a lot of different factors that will change where it goes, how strong it gets. Right. Um, but definitely a good idea to just have that in the back of your mind, especially as a viewer taking all of this info in. And that's why one of the best places you can come is to us and meteorologists right. who are actively watching this for you and not just somebody who's going to post a whole model run. Those meteorologists, M-E-D-I-A. Oh, I like that. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so much for breaking that down, Justin. Thank you for having me.